Well, hello there everyone. UXW Bill here with you this evening. The key keeper brought me some treasures from his employer. They're getting ready to move to a different and larger building, and that basically means they have been culling all manner of crap, and that's what most of it really is. But some treasures have emerged, some that the key keeper left behind because he didn't have a place to put them, including this absolutely gigantic, I think it was a spark testing machine, an ignition system testing machine from AC Delco. It was in really sad shape, would have needed an almost complete overhaul. But he's brought me some fun stuff as well. And what is in the box today? Well, we have two radios, both of them presumably out of some kind of a vehicle or another. One from Panasonic, and then one that is, I think I just speared a speaker in there, oops, probably a Walmart special. I think the one that came with the Plymouth Reliant Wagon was very much like this and really performed incredibly poorly. I guess they were using this as some kind of a shop music system, along with this regulated power supply, until one day out of the blue it just stopped working, and that was apparently that. They were going to throw it away. The key keeper asked if he could have it because he knew I'd be interested in it. And so here it is now for a quick perusal. So let's just take a quick look at this. The main thing of interest here to me is the precision regulated power supply. You can always use these. You never have too many of them. Even better if they're adjustable. I don't know where my adjustable supply got to though. It's not here right now. The radios I couldn't really care less about. This one will probably go to the recycling and Maybe I'll sell this one to somebody if they need a car radio on the cheap. I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Let's go ahead and run some tests here. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my good multimeter down with me. So I've got this crappy one, and it has done, as cables have a long-standing tradition of doing, and become all tangled up. So the first thing we'll look at, because they said this just quit working. Now, check the fuse. And the fuse certainly does not appear to be blown. But the fuse probably protects the primary side of the power transformer inside this thing and not any of the stuff on the secondary like the regulation controller, the outputs from the pass transistors and stuff like that. And this is another one of these good deals where they claim it's short circuit protected, but short circuit protection very often means for these things that it just sits and bounces off of the current limiter built into the control built into the controller until someone has the sense to resolve the short circuit or shut power off to the poor thing. As you can see, the heat sink here is really quite impressive. I think it could stand a few more fins. There are the pass transistors on the bottom, a pair of Motorola 2N3055s. See what the date code is on those. 9315. 93J5, I guess. Or 15. I'm not sure. One looks like a J, the other one looks like a 15. But in any case, this thing is, well, it's over 20 years old, that's for sure. So it could have any number of ailments, could have bad capacitors, could have a bad controller chip. Because as I started to say previously, if these things get shorted out, they oftentimes, instead of latching into a shutdown state and requiring someone to turn off the power and hopefully pay attention to the poor thing in order to get it going again, well, they usually just end up sitting there bouncing off of the current limiter. So the first thing we'll check is whether or not the outputs seem to be shorted. Stick one of those in here. Stick one of those in there. Okay, I must not be making good contact. So we'll take these little thumb wheels off of here. Probably should have hooked up jumper wires to this. Might have gone a little bit better. Let's try that. Okay, well I think I'm going to say I should have gone and gotten my better multimeter. This is a joke. Oh gosh. Okay, step down a scale or two. Yeah, I should have gotten a better multimeter and I should have made sure I was actually testing these with the right polarity going to the right connection. Out of range there. All right, well the good news is the output's not shorted and the input shouldn't be either because it didn't pop its fuse. So either there was nothing wrong with this and the fault lies entirely in the radios or their wiring. And I can't imagine why you'd think I'd ever think that. <laughs> 
what a mess. So let's go ahead, plug this thing in. At least one cord doesn't seem to be tangled around here. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in. Hopefully I turned the switch off on it. Yeah, I did. We'll have a, gotta unplug something else here. We'll have a smoke test. Okay, nothing smoked yet. I got the camcorder plugged into the same power supply, so if there is something wrong with this, <laughs> I probably know because the video will come to an abrupt end since the battery in this thing is presently discharged. All right, let's see. Hook up our leads here. Hopefully they'll stay in place. This thing might thump pretty good when it's turned on. We'll see. No, it really didn't. Just got a nice gentle hum to it. And it's working. So score! <laughs> That's awesome. Like I said, you never have too many of these. They're handier than a pocket on a shirt. That's what they are. You just use them anywhere and everywhere. Any place you need a regulated low voltage power supply. What I was going to try to do here before I wrapped this up, and I really should have invested more effort than I did in finding some clip leads, because this just isn't, this is turning into a comedy is what this is. I get one lead connected and the other one goes on the floor and ordinarily this would call for some very unprofessional language, but I don't use that unless I'm really pushed, you know. Okay, yeah, this, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I'll just go ahead and try to hold these in by hand. I'll turn the power switch off. Output decays pretty quickly, unlike that trip light one I repaired many years ago. So evidently it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, capacitor volume. It doesn't have any particularly large filter capacitors on its output. Or maybe they've dried up and gone bad. Although the trip light one was even older than this. And its output capacitors still seem to be more than good enough. Because its output declined very rapidly. Of course it could have some kind of a discharge device on its output. There's the other little cap. I thought I'd lost it. So I guess we're on to a winner here. Thank you all for watching this pretty rambly and rather unprofessionally uh, shot video. And by all means, certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you have one. Maybe someday when I'm bored or something like that, I'll get around to trying these and we'll see what happens. But it looks like I really scored here because these things are not cheap.